Hi all, this is Mr. Yeager with Physical Science. Today we are looking at acids and bases. All right, so we're going to look at characteristics of what uh, acids and bases, the basic characteristics that they have. Um, we're going to look at what they basically dissociate into, what do they break up into, what do they donate. And then we will look at the pH scale sum, and then we will finish up with neutralization reactions. So it's, it's a bit that we're going to go through today. So for acids and bases, the first thing I like to go through is just how do you know something's an acid or base based on certain characteristics that you might run into about the object, all right? Obviously, acids and bases might have some bad like reps, uh, reps to them, basically thinking acids are super dangerous chemicals. Nope, we, we are constantly eating them, okay? Uh, they are something that's basically part of our lives. Bases, eh, we don't eat as many of those, but they're important for helping us clean things up quite a bit, okay? So, the way we kind of can break this down is acids, if we look at their taste, all right, acids are basically sour in their taste. That's why you can see I have my lemons and the little baby eating a lemon. That's, they get very sour. Most out, basically acids are sour in taste. Bases are generally bitter in taste, okay? So again, there's possible that you might be eating some things that are bases. I can't think of anything at this time with it, but, um, the idea, though, is things like if you ever taste shampoo, soap, even toothpaste and things like that, they're all bitter tasting, and that is because they have, uh, they're basic, they're a base chemical, okay? Oh my gosh, this thing. All right. What about their uses? I basically kind of already explained that. Acids are things that are foods or drinks. Okay, basically, again, there's, there's exceptions, but we are, like as a generality, acids are things that we can eat. Bases are things that we can clean with, okay? Hopefully you notice that that's basically cleaning products over here. All right, cleaning products. Acids, things that we eat, okay, or drink. Hopefully you are not drinking cleaning products. Do not drink cleaning products, all right? So acids are things that you can eat and drink. Bases are things that will clean things up. Then we get to ones that maybe aren't as intuitive, okay, obviously taste and use we can obviously have seen, but we will use a material called litmus paper, okay. Uh, this is an indicator, all right, this is, this is called an indicator. It is something that can tell us whether that substance are, is an acid or a base. Litmus paper basically is kind of a pinkish color, well, not pinkish color, um, they, they can cut, no, I'm sorry. They can come in red or blue colors, all right? And what happens is when you dip the litmus paper into a substance, I'm gonna erase that one. If you dip that, that paper into a substance, if it's an acid substance, it'll turn red. If you dip it into a basic substance, it is turning blue. So litmus tur paper turns red in the presence of an acid, blue in the presence of a base. You keep on hearing me use the word basic, that's just the adjective for a base, okay? That's the same thing as calling this acidic. Instead of acidic, it's basic. All right, I wanna make sure that you're not getting confused with me saying that all the time, okay? Another indicator is cabbage juice, all right? It turns out that if you boil up a bunch of basically purple cabbage and get the liquid out of them, it'll look basically like the, the jar in the middle. It'll be a bluish purplish color. It turns out an acid will make the cabbage juice turn red or pink. A base will make a cabbage juice turn green. All right. So again, that's just telling you that it's an acid or base. It doesn't tell you how strong the acid or base is, but it'll tell you whether you have an acid or a base. One more, this is a very common one in the lab, is one called phenolphthalein. Obviously a much longer word, phenolphthalein. Okay. Again, it's another chemical indicator, so here's your whole definition, something that changes color in the presence of an acid or a base. Phenolphthalein itself is just basically a clear color, the chemical's clear. If you add it to a base, it stays clear. If you add, I'm sorry, I just said the wrong thing. If you add it to an acid, it'll stay clear. If you add it to a base, it'll turn this pink or magenta color. A lot of people like to call it magenta. Right, to be more specific, all right? So acid when it's uh, clear, when it's an acid, magenta when it's a base. So what you might be doing 
is you might have a chemical. Let's say that we have something like lemon juice. Okay. We can obviously already know that, hey, lemon juice, that's acidic. Okay? It's sour. It's something that we drink. But maybe it's something that we don't want to drink. Maybe we don't really know what it is. If I put phenolphthalein in it, what will happen is it will retain its color. Okay? It'll stay, it won't change clear, but the lemon juice will stay lemony in color. Okay? It won't change it into a pinkish, bluish color or whatever. All right? It'll stay clear. If I dip, dip litmus paper in there, it'll turn the litmus paper red. And if I put cabbage juice on in, then you might start seeing the lemon juice turn red. Okay? You might actually see that like an orange type color because the colors mixed together. Okay? So that's what we would do in a lab to try to kind of go through and identify acids or bases. Again, technically you don't need to use all the indicators, but you know, they would all confirm each other. It's not like it'll turn pink uh, with phenolphthalein and then turn red on litmus paper. That, doesn't, that would be a bad result. Something is incorrect. We also have what's called the pH scale, which we'll come back to. But basically on the pH scale, anything that is 0 through 7, okay, less than 7, is acidic. Anything greater than 7 is basic, okay, is a base. We will learn that at a pH of 7, we are a neutral substance. It's neither acidic or basic. It's exactly equal to each other. The last kind of initial property that we have is what an acid and base donate. We will learn that an acid will donate a hydrogen ion, H plus, and a base will donate something called OH minus, which is a hydroxide ion. So we'll come back to that as well. All right, it donates a hydroxide ion, an OH minus. So one's donating a positive charge, one's donating a negative charge. So, from a chemistry point of view, we are interested in saying, what is it giving? What, what atoms is it giving away or accepting with acids and bases? It's not just, hey, it tastes sour, okay? What's chemically happening? It turns out acids, as I already just said, donate a hydrogen ion. Sometimes we say it donates a proton because a hydrogen ion would just be one proton. Okay, it's given away its electron already. So acids always donate a hydrogen. If I ask you to try to identify a chemical that's an acid or a base, if the chemical starts with an H, it is very likely an acid. Okay, in almost every single case, it's very likely an a, a acid chemical. But it has to be the first element. All right. It can't be something like CH4, all right? That is not an acid. It has to be the first element listed, okay? That is an acid chemical, acidic chemical. Bases are, at, are compounds that donate this OH minus, which is called a hydroxide. So this is, again, something we should clearly see in a chemical, where if I look in a chemical and it has the OH together, like it has to be written OH, and it's always written after some other element. So you can see this is sodium hydroxide. This one would be called potassium hydroxide. This would be called calcium hydroxide. All of these chemicals are bases in the end. If I dip litmus paper into any of these solutions, I would have a blue litmus paper afterwards. So what actually happens when you put an acid or base into water? What is actually happening? And why, like, again, why do we create this unique set of chemicals called acids and bases? What happens is it goes, undergoes a process called dissociation. Okay, not disassociation, dissociation. Okay? For dissociation, what's happening is that basically the compound is splitting into its ions. So here's my chemical, HCl. What happens is it'll turn into H plus and Cl minus. It'll turn into H plus and Cl minus. All right, that's what's happening. And what's happening is then these H pluses are very active and they might go off and react with something else. So that's why as acids can be dangerous is because that hydrogen ion is very energetic 
and can then start, doing, start attacking and interacting with other chemicals and possibly causing a problem. In other cases, it might not cause any issue. It just might be sour. So if I do some dissociations with these, HBr would become H plus plus Br minus. Okay. What does H2S become? This one I'd have to do a little bit more. It does become H plus and S2 minus. Again, just look off your periodic table. H is always one plus. The anion, just pay attention to the periodic table. But I need to put a two in front of it, like in chemical reactions, okay, chemical formulas. I still need to show that this H2S gave me two H pluses with one S2 minus. I still have to have a balanced reaction there. All right, so that's what's happening with acids. So H will become H plus. The anion is just going to take all the charges from the periodic table. Nothing special there. What about bases dissociating? Same idea. Split up the Na, and then the OH splits off together. So this would be Na plus plus OH minus. I know we haven't done really any polyatomic ions. This is a polyatomic ion, we call it. But again, the whole idea is it is one ion made up of two atoms. And it's all, that's the only one you have to worry about. So you can see down here, OH becomes OH minus. The cation will find the charge off the periodic table. So this would be K plus plus OH minus. This would be Ca2 plus plus two OH minuses, because you can see here there's two OHs. We always put OH in parentheses when I have more of them, because if I write it as CaOH2, this looks like I only have two hydrogens and I want two OHs. Again, hopefully that doesn't confuse you too much. It's not going to be a major part of what we need to do, but we should at least recognize that. Right. The pH scale. We don't have to, fortunately, calculate anything in physical science. In chemistry, you would absolutely calculate this out. The pH scale is what's called an acid scale. All right, It is an acid scale. It's actually always measuring the acid strength. The scale goes from 1 to 14, where the strongest acid is down at 1, and the weakest acid is down at 14. The thing is, after we pass 7, that acid is so weak that it acts more like a base. We, we say that it's a base now. All right? but, it, but the idea is, if I ask what's the difference in the strength, the lower the number, I know it's kind of weird, the lower the number, the stronger it is. So one is stronger than two, which is stronger than three, etc. I know that looks really weird, but that's the way it kind of goes on the pH scale. It's based on a logarithmic scale, so that's why one is large while something 14 is small. Okay? So that's why we're looking at it that way. Sorry. So again, pH less than seven is going to be something that we're going to call an acid. pH greater than seven is a base. pH equal to seven is neutral. The only neutral substance out there, guys, is water. That's the only neutral substance. So water has a pH of seven. As I already stated, the lower the pH, the stronger the acid. So what's stronger, five or seven? The answer would be five. Five is stronger than seven. Seven is neutral, it's not even an acid anymore. The higher the pH, the stronger the base. What's, the more, what's more basic? 13. Okay. Again, you can think of it as the weaker the, the, weaker the acid equals a stronger base. That's really what it means. A weaker acid is a stronger base. The last thing to kind of zoom through with acid-base reactions is what we call neutralization reactions. All right? In a neutralization reaction, we're doing a double replacement reaction where I have an acid and a base on the reactant side. Okay? Acid and base are our reactants. Water and basically a salt, which we mentioned before is an ionic compound. They are our products. Okay? In a neutralization reaction, we will always have an acid and a base on the left-hand side producing water, H2O, and salt on the other side. 
Okay, salt just being what are the other two elements, not H and O. All right. When you mix acids and bases together, the pH will always approach seven because you're, as the name implies, we're neutralizing it. We're making it more water. Water is neutral. So when I mix one and thirteen together, guess what? Something that's pH as chemical that's pH of one and something that's a chemical that's a pH of thirteen, if they're equal amounts they'll come out with an equal, uh, with a pH of seven. They will basically become salt water. Now I can't say that salt's healthy for you at all, but it becomes salt water. Okay. So how do we write out these neutralization reactions? It's a double replacement reaction. So if you recall, we're basically, oops, if you recall, dang it, we're basically gonna switch two of the elements. Okay, or two of one part from each compound. All right. So either think about where you're changing the two anions, or you're changing the two anions. Okay. So only think about switching one of them. It will always produce water and the leftover chemicals. The, the in this case NaCl. Again, making sure you write it cation, anion, metal, non-metal. So if I look at a couple of problems here, I have HCl plus NaOH. What's it going to produce? Well, I know it's going to produce H2O, but I'm going to tell you, to help you out with the balancing, I recommend that you write it as HOH. HOH is water. But now this is what we can do is this H is coming from that acid, and this OH is coming from the base. So we can clearly see where it's coming from. This will be plus, what are my two other elements? NaCl. Now the thing is, please make sure this is the right chemical. Like we know it's going to be HOH. That's, that's, that's a given. Like we're done here. But you got to check the charges. Is this the correct formula? Plus one, negative one? Yes. <coughs> Remember to crisscross those charges and make it correct. Because if we get one like this, this is where we have errors. We actually have to balance the reaction. Oop, I should have done that in the other one. Sorry, let me go back. So let me put that back up. This becomes HOH plus NaCl. So your steps is, if I take this a little slower, do your double replacement. H and OH, Na and Cl. Check your charges. Plus one, negative one. Again, HOH is all good to go. Then, balance the equation. 1H, 1H. That's why I don't want you to sit there and be like, wait, 2Hs. 1H, 1H. 1Cl, 1Cl, 1Na, 1Na. 1OH molecule, or ion, it's not a molecule, ion. 1OH ion. We're good to go. So I want you to count, count the OH as a single unit. Count it as a single unit. That'll make life so much easier. So I have basically another one here. Oh, this is the one we did. There we go. How about this one? All right. I know H is going to go with OH. Don't bring the subscript. So this is becoming HOH plus what's left over? SNNA. I have a lot of people that will do this. SNA. That is incorrect. You never write the anion first. So this is N-A-S. All right. What I want you to do first is check this chemical. It's unbelievable how many people will leave that and just get it wrong. This is plus one. This is negative two. So crisscross those charges. This comes out to Na2S. Then our last step, balance out the, balance out the reaction. I have two H's. I'm only comparing that with this right here. So right there, I only have one H. So I'm going to erase this. I only have one H. I'm not looking at this H. So I need to put a 2 there. So two H's, two H's. One S, one S. One N-A, two N-A's. I need to put a 2 right here. And then two O-H's, two O-H's. We are balanced. So that, again, if I kind of take my time going through that, 
when you do it, a neutralization, write HOH in the products. Okay. To bring other elements over. What? Sorry. Bring other elements over. Metal first, metal, non metal. Okay. Three, balance the chemical form, balance the chemical formula, the salt. And then finally, balance the reaction. That is what we are doing in the process. And that's it. All right? Thank you.